Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about special theory of relativity. So what is relativity? We know things are relative, like for example, distance. If we consider my frame of reference, the Coke bottle is 10 meters away from me. But with respect to Cristiano's frame of reference, it is just one meter so that he can easily displace the bottle, I guess, which means distance is relative. It is different for different frame of reference. Another example would be velocity. If a woman is running at 5 meter per second, that is with respect to the signpost. Since she is going 5 meter every second away from the signpost. But with respect to her son, who is also running at 2 meter per second, she is covering only 3 meters every second. Because every time she covers at 5 meters in a second, her son is also covering 2 meters in a second, which means she is ahead of her son by only 3 meters. Therefore, her relative velocity with respect to sun is only 3 meters per second. That's about relativity. But what is special in special relativity? It's special because we are talking about only inertial frame of reference. That is a frame of reference which is at rest or moving at a constant velocity. We don't talk about accelerating frame of reference that comes under non-inertial frame of reference. There's one small point here that constant velocity motion is considered as an inertial frame of reference. But we know inertial frame of reference means something which doesn't change or resist the change. But we know that if something is going at constant velocity, it is going to continuously change its position. Then why do we consider constant velocity motion as inertial frame of reference? Here, let's consider I am going at a constant velocity of 40 km per hour. Now, from your perspective, you see me gushing across at 40 km per hour and yourself are stationary. But in my perspective, the whole of the road and the trees is going past me at 40 km per hour and I am the one who is stationary. So who is right? We both are right. We both can claim that we are stationary and the other person is moving. Similarly, if I'm moving at a constant velocity of 5 meter per second, then that is an inertial frame of reference because from your point of view, you are stationary and you see me moving at 5 meter per second. But in my point of view, I see myself as stationary and it's you and the background which is moving in opposite direction at a constant velocity of 5 meter per second. Therefore, we can consider constant velocity motion as an inertial frame of reference. Now that we know what we are up to, let's have a look at the postulates of special relativity. So first postulate tells that if we perform any experiment in an inertial frame of reference, that is a frame of reference at rest or moving with a constant velocity, then the experiment would give you the same result. We can perform any experiment such as measuring the boiling point of a water, complicated one like uh, measuring the wavelength in an atomic transition or a simple one like throwing a ball up. All these experiments should give the same result. Let's have a look. Here I have two frames of reference, one at rest, another at constant velocity v. In both these cases, I'm just going to throw the ball up and see what happens. As you can see, in both these cases, the ball went up and came back down to my hand. At rest, it is understandable. The ball just goes up and comes down. But what is happening in constant velocity case? So when I'm holding the ball and moving with a constant velocity v, the ball is also having that velocity v in the same direction. Now, when I throw the ball up, other than the vertical velocity, it also has the horizontal component. Hence, it is moving along with me and comes back to my hand. So in both these frames of reference, we get the same result. The ball goes up and comes back to my hand. Now watch what happens in an accelerating motion or non-inertial frame of reference. Let's say I'm accelerating at 1 meter per second square and initially I'm at rest. Now at this instant, I'm going to throw the ball up so since I'm at rest, the ball is not going to have any horizontal 
component like the last time it is just going to have a vertical velocity and since i am accelerating my velocity is going to change one meter per second every second therefore i'm going to move from this place and move sideways which means the ball is just going to go up and fall down on the floor i'm not able to catch the ball so this experiment is giving a different result unlike last time where i was able to catch the ball in this case the ball is falling on the floor that's because it's a non inertial frame of reference now the second postulate tells that the speed of light is a constant which is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and it is the ultimate cosmic limit to put into perspective let's say i'm on my bike going at 10 meter per second now i'm holding a ball in my hand which is also going at a velocity of 10 meter per second now let's say I throw the ball, say at 2 meter per second, then what is its velocity going to be? Initially, it had a velocity of 10 meter per second since I'm holding the ball and riding the bike and additional 2 meter per second when I throw the ball. Hence, its velocity is 10 plus 2, 12 meter per second. But let's say we repeat the experiment, but now we are going to throw in some light. I mean, literally. Again, I'm traveling at 10 meter per second. I switch on my headlamp. So we think the speed of light should be 10 meter per second of the bike plus the speed of light that is 3 into 10 power 8. But this is not true. Speed of light is always 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. No matter what, it will not change like our ordinary velocities. So that's the postulates of special relativity, which kind of doesn't feel so special but the consequences of special relativity are awesome like time dilation the passage of time is different for different frames of reference to explain this we need a special type of clock one that involves speed of light here is a light clock that is light photon simply bouncing between the two mirrors kept at a distance d apart and let's say every time the photon from mirror 1 hits the mirror 2 and comes back to the mirror 1 is 1 second. Now let's say I'm holding this light clock and moving with a constant velocity. Now from my perspective, the photon is covering a distance of d and d that is 2d. So the time would be distance by speed that is 2d by the speed of light that is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and we get this time as one second but in your perspective you see that the photon is traveling a longer distance that is let's say this distance is d dash so d dash plus d dash to d dash hence the time in this case let it be t dash will be equal to the distance which is 2d dash divided by the speed of light which is the same 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second therefore we get the time t dash so clearly as you can see 2d dash is greater than 2d and speed of light is same in both the cases as we talked about it in second postulate that means the time t dash has to be greater than the time t from my point of view my clock is ticking normal but from your point of view my clock is ticking slower a second for me is more than a second for you that is the passage of time is different for different point of view and that cool another consequence of special relativity is relativity of simultaneity for this consider two lightning strikes happening at the same time on two ends of the screen and i'm moving with a constant velocity to the right now, for me, in my perspective, I see both these lightning strikes happening at the same time because speed of light is going to be the same. It wouldn't change if I were to move towards the light or away from the light. Second postulate. But from your perspective, since you see me moving to the right, you think that light from the right will reach me first. Since now it has to travel a less distance compared to the greater distance from the left so you think the strike on the right occurs to me first and then the strike on the left although for you both these strikes happen at the same time but your point of view of occurrence of these events for me is different that is simultaneity is not absolute 
the simultaneous events occurs at different times for different point of view. So I hope with this video, I've made you a little curious about our reality. There's so much to talk about relativity, but I think I'll save that for another video. I'll see you soon. Adios.